Hello, and welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I'm Michael Crane, and we're here at the Bowie House on Camp Bowie Boulevard. Y'all, if you have not been to this hotel, you've got to come check it out. And today we're going to be talking with some friends, the general manager of Bowie House, as well as representatives of Community Storehouse and LBGTQ Saves. Let's go. And now I'm here with Gaylord Lammy, the general manager of Bowie House. Welcome, Gaylord. Thank you. Thanks for having us here in the hotel. It's a beautiful hotel, and we're going to walk around it in a little while after this interview. But tell us how Bowie House all came together and you became the general manager here. It's a long story, but I'll make it short. Yeah. I promise. Um, so, you know, Bowie House was really uh, Joe Ellard's vision. Yes. Uh, Joe Ellard is uh, the owner of Bowie House. Wonderful person. Yes. yes. Lo lovely person. She has a passion for um, uh, for horses and the, the Western equestrian world. and. For that reason, she comes to Fort Worth quite uh, quite often. She she lives in Dallas, um, but uh, you know every time she came to Fort Worth for any of the equestrian events, she didn't really have a, a place she she loved to stay at. So she decided to uh, to build this build her own beautiful hotel. <laughs> but but the most important part for Joe was to to create a basically a living room for Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. It's not really it just happens to be a big house right. uh, that has 106 bedrooms. You know, so that's how you really need to be looking at it. Um, so the, the bar was the big centerpiece, the lounge area, and yeah. then uh, everything else built around it. Built around it. That's Joe's vision. It's the the bar itself is beautiful. I think that came from West Texas somewhere, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, it was uh, Joe received a call one day from uh, one of her many friends uh, who is in the antique business and mm. the art world, and uh, said, "Hey, I came across this uh, hundred year old uh, saloon bar. Come have a look at it." She obviously, fell in love with it and. Uh, we built again, we built literally everything around it. Around it. We had a bar meant to go into this spot uh -huh. that we scratched completely to put this bar instead. And we're glad we did it. It's it's a beautiful centerpiece. And as you said, it's sort of a little living room. And you've got the library and these other pockets of the, 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 the game room and everything else. Yes. As part uh, of it. The Mulberry Room, the library is uh, uh, the perfect romantic corner. Uh, you know, if you just want to come for a glass of wine or have a small event and then the main lounge is where all the action takes place. And then later at night, uh, you know, I've been caught up uh, with some of the neighbors playing pool until late hours of the night because that's uh, the, a beautiful game room called the, the, the billet room. The billet room. So some of our viewers might be a little confused. That's not a Texas accent that we're hearing. <laughs> Tell us your story. Well, so when Auberge, uh, who, you know, is, is the, the manager's buoy house, uh, uh, as Joe Allard said, you know, what is your vision for the general manager uh, for for Bowie House? She's like, well, I need someone who is from Fort Worth, um, a Texan who understands the community. And Robert said, uh, how about a French guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, now look, it's, I, I was in Austin, uh, so I had spent a, a little bit of time in Texas. But um, when the opportunity came up and when I met with, with Joe, I'm like, you know, this is a perfect fit. Uh, I think Joe felt the same way, and we now have a, a, a really great relationship. Uh, and, you know, Fort Worth is such a developed uh, mm -hmm. uh, international culture, more than most people would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Now, you said, Gaylor, you've been in Austin. Where else have you worked in the hotel business? I worked in Australia, Indonesia, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, I was also in Chicago and Boston in the U.S., uh, but yeah, a little bit all over the A little bit all over the world. That's great, though. What do you think makes the hotel business unique here in Fort Worth? Because people, again, are um, uh, very knowledgeable about what luxury is. Um, and for that reason, Bowie House became very successful successful from, a, from its first day opening because people were craving something like this. Okay. You know, and not, not saying that there aren't other great places in, in Fort Worth, but there isn't anything like to that level. And people who've traveled all over, the, all over the world just wanted that in their hometown and now they, they just come here and they come again, here. it's their living room. That's great. Yeah. What, do, what do you hope people, when they come here, they take away from the experience at Bowie House? The, the friendliness of the, the service, you know, and, and again. Uh, Funny you said that. One of the, our guests have said that they, they've seen, they've been here before and it is the service and the, the experience is part of it, that they it's friendly and it's yeah. Fort Worth. It, yeah, exactly. And I mean, and that's, that's that Texas hospitality, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not, I wouldn't even say it's the Southern hospitality because it's very unique. It's Texas. Uh, I think the, the people in Fort Worth love to learn and they are uh, trainable, uh, in this industry where 
some other parts of the world, it's not that easy. So I think I think Fort Worth is good, the perfect mix of it all. Has it been a challenge finding staff and, and staffing here? Was We talk about workforce development and everything else as part of the challenges with the city. Have you had from the hospitality industry trying to find good staff? It, it has been a challenge. I mean, okay. uh, post uh, post pandemic, it's uh, you know every, everyone suffered, but in uh, in cities where there aren't so many luxury brands, it's it's even more challenging. Uh, but really, what makes a difference is uh, it's our team members, right? And uh, again, we most of them are local. They love to be trained. Mm-hmm. We we open the we we got them on board before you know weeks months before the hotel opened and dedicated to training only. So that's that's wonderful. And I'll say this: I think you are attracting some of the best and brightest, as, at least the interactions I've had here. Uh, so congratulations on that. What other business challenges are you facing as part of this industry? Um, I think um, you know it, the for the forever evolving uh, guest expectations. Okay, know, which makes it fun. To- What's the craziest <laughs> request you've had? You don't have to name anybody. But do you have? Uh, can you tell us? I mean, I've had I've had requests where uh, people have really requested for us to remove those amazing mattresses we have uh-huh. and 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 sleep on a wooden board, okay, uh, and spending you know four digits uh, a night uh, in that room, uh, and so uh, you know, on a, it, sleeping on a board, yeah, on a board, okay, that's it. Or that's... Uh, you know, uh, nowadays you get the oh, I would like a, a cold plunge on my on my balcony because it's a big trend, right? Right. So we, right. Get, we get these requests. Okay, you just go um, big, a, bring bring a big bucket of sleep. Yeah, throw you, it you, thankfully, you can buy those on Amazon <laughs> for. Uh, you know, they're inflatable even. <laughs> so, that's right. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot of, of requests, but uh, it makes it fun. And, and the, the, the team loves to deal with these. Just with individual requests. Stories to tell. It's story, and that's, what I, that's what I'm <laughs> leading to, stories yeah. to tell. What do you see as sort of what gets you excited about Fort Worth, being in Fort Worth and the future of Fort Worth? What, what, make, what gets you excited? Uh, what I love the most, what gets me excited is the, uh, the community aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I live in a neighborhood about 12 miles west of uh, downtown, and um, I can't believe how many people I meet who know 10 other people I know now in, in, yeah. in, in Fort Worth. And having opened Bowie House just opened the doors for me and my family to, uh, to, meet, to meet the community. And the tightness and the, the, the solidarity there is amongst people is uh, very unique. It is. It's, you have to, I, it, it's a big, small town. And people, and we've, I think, worked hard to keep that culture of, it's a small town feel, but we're almost a million people at this point. Exactly. And, and so, uh, you know, there's nothing better than introducing someone to Fort Worth for the first, to Fort Worth for the first time. And even though I'm only a year old in this town, or in this city, um, it, everyone I introduced to Fort Worth is wild. He's yes. blown away. So um, it's, uh, that's what to be excited for the future. It's great. Well, the hotel is wonderful. I've gotten to see it in various stages as it was opening and uh, before it was open for this, these are all finished out. I've seen it finished out. Um, the suites are amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to encourage everybody to come and stay a night or just get a drink, uh, see the suites. Um, any, is there anybody famous that stayed here already? A lot. Yeah. I can't, you, I can't drop names. You can't drop but, names? But, you know, anyone you can think of. Has probably stayed here. Be here right now. It yeah, has been around. What about maybe you know Dickies is so close. Have, have anybody performers there ended up staying here? Uh, you know we. Uh, you could divulge because it's already public and. And well, you know, usually um, the 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 people that come through the doors they they love their yeah, privacy and yes, and anonymity, so we keep it that way. But I get Let's it. just say there's a lot of good people watching in the in the lounge. Okay, yeah. we'll we'll leave it at that. Yes. So people should come and. People watching the lounge, right? Okay, exactly. That's good. Good. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of this fabric of Fort Worth that um, is just new and unique and exciting, and and it's a beautiful space. So I do encourage people to come check it out and and uh, and see. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. have a great day. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Now I'm here with Sharon Herrera. She actually is from West Texas, and so she told me that's how you pronounce her last name, Herrera, with LBGTQ Saves. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here. Happy Pride Month. Thank you. Glad you're here. Um, tell me a little bit about LBGTQ Saves, how that organization all came about. All right. LGBTQ Saves began in 2010. Yep. There was about nine suicides in our nation back to back of LGBTQ youth, okay. which triggered my suicide attempt. I attempted suicide in the late 70s. Okay. 
And uh, just to think that our children were turning to that in 2010 just kind of shook me up. Working for Fort Worth ISD, I knew exactly what was going on. What was going on. So I wanted to start an organization where uh, possibly, potentially, be able to help save lives. Yeah. So you, uh, in the 70s, I, let's drill down on that a little bit, attempted suicide. Yes. You were wrestling with coming out. Yes. What, uh, was, what was happening there? Latina, Catholic. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of resources. Nobody really to turn to. My family, we used to watch a sh show called Soap. I don't know. Yeah, of course. I used to, yes, of course. Yes, 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 yes. yes yeah. Billy Crystal. You're, you're bringing it back. <laughs> Billy Crystal played a gay character. Yeah. and One of the first, I think, to yes, come out of the yeah, very yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. And the fa his family on the show made fun, and so did my family. So my, my uh, closets kept getting darker and darker. And then finally, a Catholic priest told me that I was going to hell. So that solidified my decision. Hmm. I was going to take, I didn't know about guns or drugs in the house. Okay. Uh, so, but Drano. Drano was the way I was going to take my life. And I was sitting in front of you today because my aunt uh, told me seven words. That's the reason I'm here. And she said, I know, mija, you don't like boys. As I was about to ingest a force stronger than myself, I uh, placed her in the bathroom where I was going to ingest the Drano. And that's what the, the words that she told me. And um, yeah, it takes one affirming adult to save a life. And it still stands true today. She didn't know anything about being a lesbian or her gay niece, but she did have one thing. And that was unconditional love for me. Yeah. And that saved my life. Was there something that she saw or knew? How did she know? Did you ever talk about that later? How she yeah. knew that oh, you were nowadays, on the verge? Nowadays, we talk. She'll send, she, we text every day. Yeah. Almost, she's 82 years old. Wow. And um, Aunt Margaret, and she says, but you were such a tomboy. You didn't want to wear dresses. You did, you know, you were just so active back then. I'm not a tomboy now. <laughs> my, my wife is, I'll tell you a story about, uh, she was we're, we're traveling out of town. She asked me to, pop the hood on the truck so she went to check the, the oil and I said uh, I have a mechanic for that so she just popped the, and I couldn't find the how to pop <laughs> the yes. hood yes yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, we we rarely talked about it we still rarely do but the thing she'll say to me is that you were such a little town boy you were such a active yeah. in, in this and that yeah. but um, yeah like I said we still communicate every day yeah it just took someone attuned to you one yes that knew yes and one person yes. to sort of reach out and say um, that I just lost a friend through suicide, the funeral's mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, and so as a community, there's a little bit going through that too. Not the same circumstances as you, but you often think about, I do now, why, what did I miss along the way that we didn't actually, you know, have a communication that wouldn't save that. Right. Um, and so I think yeah. that's your mission now, right? Yes, is to yes. figure out how to connect yes. with people yes. and save them as they are figuring out life. Yes. Right? And what troubles me is that I attempted in the late seventies. And to take the think that next Benedict took their life four months ago That's in right. Oklahoma. So it's like, we're still, I would love to be out of business. Right. You know, but yeah. we're still needed. Still needed. Yeah. Still and today. you, you uh, were, uh, you're a veteran. Yes. So how, how did that <laughs> shape sort of what you're doing now too? Uh, my mother died when I was 20 and uh, the carpet was ripped from under me and uh, it was just, Going and I went back into the closet and joined the military. I have uncles that were all in the military, so I didn't know what I was going to do. I had, I dropped out of college because of the death. I couldn't, didn't know how to handle it. Okay. So Uncle Sam was the decision I made, and it was a blessing in disguise. Okay. I would have served 20, 30 years, but I served during the witch hunts. Yeah. Before don't ask, don't tell. Before the killing of Alan Schindler. Right. Clinton signed on the dotted line. But even after don't ask, don't tell. Thirteen thousand of us were kicked out. Really. So before I could get kicked out, I just completed four and got it. Okay. I loved, love still to this day. Loved those. Yeah. Stories. Yeah. The Air Force was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we we need our. Veterans, we need people serving. Yes, and I'm excited yeah. about uh, the city of Fort Worth hiring a veteran. That's right. We yes. have now a veteran veteran affairs yes. officer that's going to help us. And you know, there's a lot of coordination that has to happen. Yes, so yes. with the county and other things, um, and just making sure we're, they're getting benefits. They're they know where to go. Yes, and there's been a big push in that sense. Too. Yes, all I asked for was discounts at restaurants and <laughs> in parking spaces. They like have it low. That, yeah. <laughs> That's really That's a good. Big plus. That's good. <laughs> you um, also, as part of this initiative, um, have maybe trying to work with the national movement on bullying. Yes. And that's one of the things I think we um, have an idea of mm -hmm. what bullies are, but bullies come in all shapes and sizes, yes. right? Yes. Um, and it may be a, a, a lot of um, uh, narcissism and other things that are part of it. Tell us about what you're doing in, in that vein. I'm working with uh, national organizations and uh, the Bullying Institute as well to possibly have a bill out there or something federally 
called that we can protect our employees from workplace bullying. Uh, I've experienced it myself. Okay. So I was trying, I received the the glimpse of it firsthand in 2010. The district that I work for, for they sent me to uh, Harvard University for a whole week. Okay. And they tapped in on it and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Because I was the district's mediator and trainer back then. So I brought the training like five or six, after five or six trainings, they were shut down because employees were like, they have a name to it now. Right, right. So, and a lot of people endure, whether it's, you know, uh, overworking and just setting a, an employee up for failure. If, yeah. You need to create the environment that's, cult, you know, nurturing. Nurturing the safe and everything. Yes, yes. And since I've, I'm very active on LinkedIn and posting, there was a death of Kevin Morrissey back then in 2010 that I, I started researching and he died suicide. Okay. Because of workplace bullying. And then recently, uh, Dr. Uh, Bailey from one of the HB, one of those universities, HBCUs, yes, yes, yes. universities <laughs> died by suicide as well. Oh. So it triggered it to, okay, it's still going on and it hasn't ended. And then a lot of people have reached out from local organizations here in the city of Fort Worth. That's great. So uh, I, I, I just wanted that to, to stop. To stop too. Yeah. Because it's suicide. It's suicide, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Eventually it gets back into yes. where people... Um, don't feel valued or worthy. Right. right. And, and and they could be having a mental illness and that's going to intensify right. what they're going through. Right. Tell, so, well, uh, tell us some success stories then that you've had. Uh, as far as with LGBTQ yeah, saves, yeah. Uh, it's the success. Uh, we work very closely with Charleston State University. Okay, great. Uh, their interns give us 75 hours, which saves me. Yes. Because we're a very small organization. We're a multi-million dollar organization working on a $100,000 budget. That's right. We're that's still right. 100% donor funded. Uh, so... Charlton State University intern came to see me after two years. She had graduated. We do a breakfast with Santa. Okay. She came to find, she said, I knew you'd be here. I just want to come thank you because my 27-year-old son was contemplating suicide. But because of what I did with LGBTQ Saves, how I helped LGBTQ Saves, he was able to come out. Wow. So that's that's what that's one success. There's many, and people often ask me, how do you define success when we say likes? When Harry right. comes up and says thank you. Uh, another the website, I cannot say enough about our website. There was a gentleman in Dallas with a plumbing, small plumbing business that wanted to donate money. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get back to him on time because I work full time yeah. for what I see. So when I got back at six o'clock, he says, I got everything I needed on your website. Here's $5,000. Wow. Yeah. So those, you know, we're doing something right. Yes. Or the, the parent that comes up to me that I don't even know. And they'll tell me, you don't know me, but you helped me save my son's life. Wow. Stories like that. Yeah. And, and, and the shots in the arm that I need to keep going because this is very hard work. So I have yeah. two full time jobs. Yes, no, I know, I know you do. Thanks for what you're doing. What's next for LBG, LBGTQ Saves? Uh, next is, well, you know, we've got the 1012 yes. building. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully yeah. the resource center will be in there and we can provide everything that we do out of a storage room in a church that we rent now. Everything there from GED to counseling, everything free for that child. We cannot provide housing because there's so much red tape involved. Right. But we want to provide everything that that child needs to thrive. Yeah, that's so, great. And like I said, we're now... Uh, in different states, Illinois, Chicago, uh, no, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Connecticut, Ohio, Michigan, and Florida. And the reason we're there is because we went virtual. You got so now we're in the st other states. You're in other states as well. Yes, wow. yes. COVID wow. scared us, but at the same time, when we went virtual. We grew. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, I think also too, it's uh, sometimes easier, right? Yes. Virtually for yes. people to reach out than it is maybe one on one. Yeah. Who they're going yes. to, especially during COVID, because kids were trapped at home with yeah. parents that didn't understand. Yeah. So uh, what was also neat during COVID is a lot of grandparents started reaching out because their their children had kicked out the grandchildren. From ah, them. and it was like, okay, yeah, that's a whole other yeah, yeah. other piece of it. Um, well, how can people find you? How can people get involved? go to our website? Go to our Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I always I'm going to give out my telephone number right here. Sure, eight one seven seven two six one eight nine eight because I get calls at nine o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning of youth or parents needing help. Well, I will personally go and visit parents that are struggling with their child, and uh, I'm still there able to do that. Yeah. So, and this weekend is our, our fourth annual uh, Pride Picnic, yeah. which is drawing over probably 400 people. Wow. And uh, it is an incredible event, and I invite you to come stop by. Okay, again. okay, but, yeah. Uh, it's just, an, uh, we have four major events, but this is our biggest one. The biggest one. Yes, yes. Well, I'll say this. I think that our community, and maybe bigger than our, even our community, need a hundred thousand of you, <laughs> you 10,000 of people like you, um, that are out there making sure, figuring out ways to connect with everybody. Yes. And, and really back to that idea that it's about 
um, being worthy right. and that every life is worthy yes. um, and that we have to figure out how to cherish all those rights yes. and what that looks like. So thank you for what you're doing and thank, thank you for you. being involved in the community. And I really appreciate calling you a friend and, and, and everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate live in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Thank you. Now I'm here with some friends from Community Storehouse, Katie Johnston, the CEO, and Aaron Rahr, Director of Development. Welcome. Thank you for thanks having for being here. Yes, thanks, thanks for having us. Of course, of course. So I'm a big fan of what y'all are doing, and I think it's a great community asset. So tell us what Community Storehouse is and, and how you're helping in the community. Community Storehouse is a nonprofit that has been around for over 40 years. We were originally started by five local churches that came together and saw a need that wasn't being met in the local community. And over the past 40 years, we have just morphed into this wonderful organization that we have today um, where we're serving families from all over Tarrant County, Denton County, Wise County um, with the various programs that we have to offer. Yeah. What are some of those programs? Uh, our biggest program by far right now is our nutritional center, our food pantry. Okay. Uh, we're open five days a week, which is very uncommon for food pantries in the area and thus seeing the massive growth that we're currently seeing. Sure. Um, we have our educational programming. That is what we're doing right now, which is really exciting, is our summer camp. Okay. So we are hosting four weeks of camp for kids in grades one through eight. Um, we also do tutoring. We have a Christmas program that we do uh, end of, or beginning of December. Um, we also have our clothing program and as well as the many partnerships and programs that we also facilitate. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about what you start off with the food program that I think we see people now that are struggling to make ends meet, huh. um, that the inflation has caused a lot of problems. The milk is much more expensive, eggs, everything across the board. Those salaries have increased. So tell us a little bit about maybe what you've seen in the uptick there uh, with with people. You know, it's it's one of those things where just across the board, you're seeing people that normally wouldn't come to us are coming to us. We're seeing neighbors, uh, people that are in the school districts that we see on an everyday basis that all of a sudden are struggling with, do I buy our medication? Do we pay for our health insurance or do we buy food? And so it's a really hard struggle to watch. And our hope is that we are able to help with other programs through organizations like Tarrant Area Food Bank that we're a partner with, that we're able to take out just a little bit of that burden off their plate so that they're able to make decisions that are are better for their families. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm a big proponent of public-private partnerships. So, and, I, and thinking through this through that um, the government can't solve all the problems, right? You need nonprofits like you stepping into that where people need help. And we can help facilitate those conversations and, and the government can help where they can, but y'all are doing really great work. So how, where do your funds come from? How, how do you get the funds as part of that? Well, that's my job. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so um, it definitely comes through grants and uh, foundations and um, individuals. Okay. And tell us how people could get involved in that uh, if they wanted to get involved. Well, you can get involved by being a donor. You can be involved by volunteering, um, joining one of our committees. What about donations? Maybe to someone that's cleaned yes. out their garage or house lately. Yes, Until that's is, right. That's yes. one of the things that Katie didn't mention is uh, we do have a donation center and we have two resale stores. Yes. So that helps a lot with our operational cost um, for a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and you can donate anything basically except for a mattress. So I think is one of the only things that you don't okay. take. <laughs> Um, so for and, the viewers to let you them know, know I, someone, <laughs> yes. you can get a personal pickup. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So I, I, as, as we're alluding to, I did have uh, lots of things as we started cleaning out our, our garage and talked with you and said, would you come pick it up? And you actually did yourself. I know that's, that's personal service, but you're, what you'd said is anything that's except a mattress you would take as part of donation, either as resale, uh, in, a, in your shops or, um, through other partnerships that you have. Correct. And we will pick up, um, basically within a 15 mile of our Fort Worth location okay. as well. And where is that location? So it is off Katy Road okay. in Fort Worth, okay. off of Katy Road and Golden Triangle. So okay. Alliance area, we're North Fort Worth. That's great. What are some other key partnerships that you have that help you, know, you do what you do? 
So we partner with so many organizations. Obviously, being in education, we have a lot of partners within local school districts. Um, Keller ISD, Northwest, uh, Birdville ISD, Argyle, which we love all of our partnerships with our school districts because it allows us to keep a really great pulse point on what's happening in education. Um, we have a, a, a wide variety of churches. Life Church is a huge supporter of ours. Um, we partner with foundation, foundations such as Sid Richardson. We have a partnership with them for a program called Go Beyond Grades, which we're very excited about seeing come to Tarrant County. Um, other foundations like Eamon Carter are also very pivotal in enabling us to continue what we do. Um, we also have wonderful corporate sponsors. We see that in volunteerism as well as in uh, uh, monetary support. Uh, Mercedes Benn Financial, um, Charles Schwab, they're all wonderful partners that we appreciate greatly. That's great. And you alluded to your educational program. Tell us a little more about that. How, how, does, how do kids get involved in that? Um, in a number of different ways. So we, word of mouth is obviously a big part of, of what we do. We have connections through 211, which if you know of anyone that's out there that's needing support, 211 is a great resource to be able to call in and, and find out where locally you can receive support. Uh, we also, again, in working with the school districts, if we know that there's a child that's suffering, we'll receive a referral from a counselor, social worker, um, specialization teacher, like a dyslexia teacher that knows of a child that's suffering. Schools do a lot. They are amazing in helping our students, but sometimes those kids, whether or not they have two working parents, one working parent, there's just not enough time in the day. And so our tutoring services allows those kids to come and get some one-on-one -on -one support in an area that they're struggling with. So you work with the school districts, they come to your facility. The, right? Yes. After school and get extra tutoring, extra support. Yes. I, and that's kind of the idea. Mm -hmm. And then our, oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. And then we have spring break camp and we have summer camp that we're into right now. And we have a really good alliance with the school districts um, because of our snack pack program also. Okay. So this past year, uh, school year, we were in 72 schools. Okay. Uh, so you put snacks together to deliver to schools so kids have something to take home. On the weekends. So yeah. they've already been identified to potentially not have food on the weekends uh, by counselors. So we have that direct contact with them so we can tell them about our educational programs as well. Okay, great. Well, thank you for being here. Um, how can people find you? We know where you are on Katie, in Katie Road, but where, how can people find you? Um, I would say go to our website. Okay. It's yeah. www.communitystorehouse.org. Great. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thanks Thank for working to the community. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Fort Worth Ford. Again, if you have not visited the Bowie House, please come check it out on historic Camp Bowie Boulevard. It's a wonderful place, restaurant, bar, everything. Also, check out some of the friends we had on today and the difference they're making here in the Fort Worth community. And if you have story ideas, reach out to us, let us know, send an email to district3 at Fort Worth, Texas. We'd love to share that with the community. Thank you.